Screen down, you got a shot. Walker missed it, and Purdue escapes the Breslin Center. Brad LaPlante and Paolo John Andrea here with uh, Spartans Illustrated at the Breslin Center. As you can tell, um, just you know, witnessed a 64-63 loss to Purdue. Uh, Paolo, what are your general thoughts? Well, appreciate it, Brad. I would say, you know, for coming off a loss, seven-game winning streak coming in, might expect a little bit of a drop-off maybe emotionally. That was not the case here today. Um, definitely a lot of energy in the building. MSU at points looked like they were the better team. At points looked like they were trying to give it away. It was sort of a game of runs, and uh, Purdue ended up on top one point. A lot of small factors indicated it, and, um, you know, we can get into that, but just very razor thin margin today yeah and um specifically too like like M msu was down so early uh you know do you think that maybe performing you know in a, a better full complete game do, how much do you think that played a role yeah and that's definitely something Izzo touched on too where he said this game was essentially lost in the first couple minutes because they were so careless with the ball you saw Purdue was not shooting very well in the 30s around that time and still didn't really scratch a double-digit lead. So MSU was within striking distance despite not taking a very good care of the ball, despite not shooting well themselves. So had the game more, been more level early, I think their play through the next 30 minutes that showed you they probably were the superior team in those minutes and that deficit early definitely uh, dug, them, dug them too big of a hole, I would say. Right, I know too, and I was thinking about this uh, specifically with Hogard and those last two free throws that he shot. I mean, he was one for three today. He made the first one, yeah. and the you know the last two that he, you know, I think that was what in the last three minutes he yeah. missed them both. I mean, you make one of those. Do you think that that also, I mean, could play a factor into you know MSU potentially putting this one into overtime or winning? Yeah, so that's something actually I specifically asked him. I was just, everybody was mulling over the turnovers and, you know, Edie's last possession and kind of the major things that influenced this game. But I said, AJ, as far as maybe another factor you could point to as influencing this game, influencing the outcome, what would you say? And he'd say, you know, I, I definitely take responsibility for those two free throws. If he, he said if he would have knocked those down, he believes they would have came out with the victory. Obviously, I believe Aikens missed a front end on one as well. So, you lose by one point, you look to those. Those are possessions that you're not handling the ball. You're at the free throw line. You definitely want to knock those in in a one possession game. So I would say AJ himself pointed to that specifically being a potential potential swinging factor in this game as well. Yeah, and, and it's tough too because you have the number three team of the country come in, right? And you have a potential, I mean, you have the, the, the chance to beat them. And, you know, there is the moral victory right where at, on one hand yes it's great that you did almost win this game you had a chance to win right. this game but again another missed opportunity it seems for msu yeah so i and again i'm going to keep reverting back to what uh, the coaches and players said Izzo flat out said you know i'm not one to ever take silver linings moral victories but he said this is an instance where i went into the locker room and told them how proud i was of them for competing where he expressed he normally would not do so so he, as well as the players, seem pretty proud of their effort. Obviously, sometimes that's not enough, and they all seem to regurgitate that. There are no moral victories here, but as far as maybe not playing to the best of their ability, they played a very good game, but still left some things on the table in a one-point loss to what you could argue is the best team in the nation against a, arguably the National Player of the Year, Edie. You see he towers out there. He's very difficult to defend, and... They did do a good job despite him getting over 30 points. They executed their game plan to play him one-on-one, -on -one, limit the guards. They did that for the most part. Towards the end, you saw the guards get free, kind of hit some big, big threes when MSU was going on runs and really quietening the crowd. So, Yeah, and, and uh, Tyson Walker, too, just, just having the game of his life. What do you think about him taking that last shot? Hey, you live with it if... If he's the one to miss the shot, obviously it was not the best look from the outside. He was well defended and five, six feet off the three-point line when you only need two. Obviously, it's only time for a catch and shoot down a second and a half, or second and a half down one. Obviously, you want to have the ball in his hands. Maybe he could have gotten a better look, but you're obviously limited when you got to catch and shoot with the first guy you get it to. But um, that was an instance where you saw Malik Hall early in the year, actually, against Kentucky 
five seconds or less on the shot on the game clock. He got free for open dunks. He was just kind of the middle of the center of the play in those instances. That's something they were missing, just a guy to get the ball to who's capable of shooting from anywhere. So Walker a little undersized, easier to defend. Just turned out that it just didn't go in. You got to live with it. And did you, so I noticed this, and I don't know that anybody else was talking about it, but Monty Sissoko didn't shoot at all. I did not notice that. <laughs> I honestly did. So, and, and, I, and I saw it on the ESPN scorecard. It said zero for zero. Okay. So what, I mean, I guess, does that just mean that, I mean, Zach Eady was on him all the time, or, or what's the deal there? Now, you know, in the past, it seems Izzo's tended to, what he said is, I pick my poison and I pick that poison again. He tends to play, produce strong big men one on one. Let them do what they will. Let's limit the guards. Let's play it that way. Now, as far as I overlook Sissoko not even getting a shot, I did not even notice that. But <laughs> I'd say, you know, it didn't seem that didn't seem to jump out as man. Sissoko's not contributing his part. It's you know, it seemed the game plan was to get it in the guys that were shooting well. Walker obviously game of his life as you said Hogarth shooting the ball well aside from the guards there was not a lot of production elsewhere and it seemed that the plan was to put it in the guards hands where MSU felt they had the advantage and take advantage there as far as Sissoko not getting an attempt obviously you'd like to see him clean some boards up get put it up right. maybe get him a lob but it didn't seem uh, that was that was the focal point today and lastly, really just moving on, moving forward to where does this team, how confident do you, do you feel in this team, you know, with Hall out, with Hall being out? And, and that's obviously going to be a big piece that's missing from him. So where does this team go and yeah. what, how much is that going to hurt them? So, you know, coming into today, I believe they were 7-1 and one until that Illinois game with Hall and Aikens in the lineup. So obviously very strong with full strength. Now, you see what happens at the end of, for instance, the Wisconsin game. Hall's just in the right place, right time. Mismatch, matchup problem. Can get in, get in the lane. He can shoot from three. He's just a, he's a problem for opposing teams. He's a strong guy, gets in for rebounds. So, talk about the heart and soul and an identity. He kind of embodies that of do-it-all kind of guy. Not very selfish, always making the right play. And Izzo himself said, you know, we we wanted to go out there and do this for him today because he's crushed and didn't exactly lay out what the extent of the injury might be, but it seems like he's going to be out for some significant time once again, and that's uh, something to be detrimental. But what is encouraging is you see how well the guards can play and how they can elevate the play of everybody else on the floor, and they can get a bucket when you need it. That was Malik Hall. He is that bucket when you need it kind of guy. But they also have Hauser, Hogard, Walker, three. Three guys, I would say, are just as good, if not more capable in that respect. So, obviously, a front court guy where you're thin, it's troublesome. But on the other hand, you see the guards are able to carry it in a sport that is determined by guard play. It's it's definitely crushing to a team that is thin, as Izzo said. But um, as far as being able to overcome it, if you have a, an opponent that maybe doesn't have a seven foot four center, you might be able to overcome it. So. Right, and I was thinking of that, too, because Edie had, I, I mean, how many points did he have? 32, I believe. Right, and the rest of his team had, you know, pennies compared to that, right? So yeah. it's just, I mean, you, you, t you could have, should have, would have, right? But if you take Edie off that team, this, the, you know, the Purdue team is, I feel like, a lot more flat. And so, I don't know. I mean, moving forward, MSU plays, who is it, Rutgers yeah. next, right? So that, um, you know, that's an important game. Uh, you know, Big Ten. Obviously, again, um, how do you think MSU can right the ship in this two-game losing streak? Well, I would say in the two losses, they you could argue they should have won both, which obviously that can be disheartening to a team or that can be a little inspirational. Now, seeing the makeup of this team and how they're able to respond to adversity so far this year, they seem to be pretty resilient. You go back to that Wisconsin game, and I'm going back to that because it's that was a tough environment. That was a crucial spot big road Big Ten game against a ranked opponent and they hit some big shots when they were down and it was back and forth could have easily fell fat fell flat and died there so this team does seem to have a bit more resolve than ones in years past and uh, you know going from a seven game win streak to now potentially dropping three straight straight if you were to drop that Rutgers game I would think they're going to be they're going to be pretty focused after probably playing their A- minus game these past two games and a couple shots didn't go and that determined the outcome they've been right there I don't, 
I don't foresee them uh, breaking stride. I feel like they would come away with that one. Cool. Well, we look uh, look forward to it, obviously. Um, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys in the next one.